Welcome everyone to the 2023 Global Animal Disaster Management Conference brought to you in partnership by Animal Evac New Zealand with our platinum sponsor, Four Paws International. Before we begin, we have a few basic housekeeping items. We want to bring to your attention an important update to the conference schedule. There was an error in the Australian Times for the New York session, session H being the remaining one, on the initial schedule. Please visit our website at www.gadmc.org to view the updated and corrected schedule. The Zoom chat feature has been disabled. If you have any questions, please put them in the Q&A box. This year, we have enabled multilingual closed captioning, so if you would like to hear the presentation in another language, please click the closed caption icon at the bottom of your screen. We encourage you to use the hashtag GADMCONF in your social media posts about the conference to help spread the word. A short evaluation will be made available as you exit the presentation. Your feedback is valuable to us and will help to shape the next GABAC conference. Finally, a reminder that the video recording for this and all other presentations will be available later this year once they have been properly edited. It is our privilege to welcome Dr. Heyman Diana who is an associate lecturer at the Newcastle lecturer at the Newcastle University in New South Wales with extensive research experience in disaster resilience and construction he is here today to share his experience and perspective on animal evacuation during disasters the challenges and best practices welcome Heyman. um hello uh Ladies and gentlemen, colleagues, yeah, I can see two colleagues uh, that, uh, that also they are joining the meeting. So, and all attendees, uh, I'm honored to present our research project, uh, Animal Evacuation During Disaster Challenges and Best pra Practice. As we investigate into uh, this important topic, I want, I want to take a moment and uh, exp express my gratitude uh, to the conference organizers for providing this platform uh, that we can share our research project. Uh, as you mentioned, my name is Heyman Dianet from Newcastle University, New South Wales, Australia. And uh, for this part of the project, I'm representing our research team. So uh, if you go to the uh, slides, the first one, uh, just I included uh, my team's member. So uh, Professor Temi, just uh, she had the previous uh, the, the talk. So uh, yeah, so she mentioned about uh, some part of the project. So. I go to other part of the project. So she is a, but actually she is professor and she is a project manager for the whole project. Yeah, so we have uh, Dr. Yuan, Robert Henderson, Heidi Chaplow, uh, Rosanna Hart, Kirley Thompson, and Carly La Rogers in our team as well. Uh, yeah. So the, about disaster. So the, for this conference, I think that everyone knows about the disaster. So disaster, whether natural or man-made, like have become an unfortunate reality in our world today. Uh, in the chaos and uncertainty that uh, they bring, we must remember that our responsibilities extend beyond uh just safeguarding human so it's also 
uh, we need to consider uh, also animals and our beloved companion uh, in this uh, disaster management efforts. Uh, so about our research project, uh, so our the, our research project is aimed to uh, to shed a light on on the like challenges and best practices and initiatives related to animal evacuation during disaster through extensive studies collaboration with different stakeholders and uh, like a, a, a different scenario we have discovered uh, crucial findings. So the previous session, uh, Temi talked about like a, some finding about the rural community and isolated communities. Uh, so the, our project uh, actually that was, that was extended of like a recently completed project conducted by the University of Newcastle and Hunter Local Land Services that uh, audited possible facilities, mostly show ground and uh, livestock sales yard uh, to see if they are suitable for sheltering animal uh, in disaster emergency. And also uh, this project, as Timmy mentioned, uh, received that uh, Australian government fund. So as I mentioned, so the aim of the whole project is uh, to improve animal safety during disaster. Uh, so such as bushfire and flood. Our research seeks to, seeks to identify and develop best practices for animal emergency management and, and create measures to address any challenges in uh, current practices. Uh, the, we have uh, different objectives, objectives, and for example, a couple of them is like a, examine current challenges and opportunities affecting animal evacuation in Hunter region, and the other objective that is related to my today's pre presentation is just provide recommendation to improve pre-disaster planning response and recovery uh, of, the, of the built environment and empower local communities uh, to improve resilience towards bushfire planning and flooding response. Yeah, just uh, checking, can you hear me? Uh, I don't hear anything. We can hear you just fine. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, th th that's good to know. <laughs> Thank you. So the the overall our research project uh, has two streams. So the first one is improving animal safe places for evacuation. So it has like a few activities under stream one, for example, assessing safety and vulnerability of uh, 25 potential animal safe places to understand how well they can withstand different types of disaster. So we, we had most of the assessment and we looked at both physical structure and also the services uh, available at each safe facilities. Uh, so by doing this, we determined how vulnerable like each facility is. So we could like address uh, the vulnerability that they have. So that was another activity in uh, the stream one. So we collected some data to, under, to understand how well these facilities can handle animals during emergencies. This, uh, this was uh, 
we looked at their capacity, the logistical requirements, like how much time and resources are needed to evacuate uh, animals from like nearby uh, communities and farms to these safe facilities. So with this information uh, from like a, those activities that I mentioned, uh, we at the moment we are develop, uh, developing practical and cost-effective solution to upgrade these facilities. So these upgrades will be tailored to each location, unique to needs and uh, aligned with the uh, animal welfare practices, climate change adaptation, and uh, emergency evacuation guidelines uh, here in New South Wales, Australia. And uh, in stream two, in stream two uh, so that was, uh, the title is Enhancing Communication and, communi and Community Engagement and also Operational Capacity and capabilities. So that we have few activities also here. Uh, so the, the one of that, that also Timmy mentioned in the last talk that was about the training and preparing facility operators. So we will conduct a training program for all facilities, uh, operators, like managers, volunteers, to teach them about animal welfare and evacuation planning and procedure. So this training will also include practical exercises to help them understand how to provide support uh, during rescue, evacuation, and emergency just care of animals. So the, we, the, we have partnered here with uh, local land services, uh, Resilience New South, uh, South Wales, the SES, RFS, different local government. So to ensure that uh, we can prepare these uh, this, uh, facilities with all the information from these organizations out as well. So another uh, activity here was engaging with uh, local communities. So the, the previous workshop uh, just talk about, uh, the, the previous talk here just talk about uh, some workshops. So we, the, we had other workshops uh, to bring and to bring and create like a shared evacuation response plan. So from different background. So I will go to more details uh, uh, just uh, in a short time. That was the, another activity. So th this activity is about spreading awareness and information. So this is because we want to uh, bridge the gap between the awareness and preparedness. We implement the animal, if we, if we want to implement an uh, evacuation awareness campaign. So at the moment we are the, at the first stage of designing this and uh, developing this. So the, the next slide, so the, the focus group workshops. So the, up to now we had like a different workshops that we held in different locations. So this uh, knowledge exchange workshop, workshops helps us uh, to gather information from stakeholders and promote collaboration between stakeholders. Uh, this workshop facilitated 
like open discussions and collaboration to get inside into the challenges that uh, each stakeholder faces. Uh, so the, these workshops, as I said, that was in, involved different stakeholders involving in animal em emergency evacuation planning and operation. So, and that was across uh, nine local government uh, here in Hunter region. So, and also we had livestock farmers, we had pet owners, uh, uh, horse owners, animal care, animal safe places, facility managers or operators, and like a other relevant government and non government organization. So the, uh, here uh, I go through some of uh, our like uh, findings up to now. Uh, so the the findings like uh, have been categorized under three main themes. So uh, the first one is governance issues. Second one, social challenges, and the third one, infrastructure and financial concerns. So the under governance. So just I go through uh, the just some of the challenges and uh, some of like initiatives that came out from the workshops from different. Uh, stakeholders so that we identified significant significant challenge in form of lack of co collaboration corporate uh, co cooperation and information sharing among uh, among various uh, organizations involved in emergency management and especially in animal evacuation so it was observed that uh, certain stakeholders were not adequately engaged, which led to potential conflict between different organizations. These conflicts, the, a little bit uh, the, the, hindered the response uh, effort uh, and, and the whole uh, emergency response systems. So to the two others, uh, this lack of collaboration, uh, so that was stress that the stress, stress the importance of stab establishing clear system procedure and relationships well ahead of time. So the by doing this information exchange and approvals during emergency could be expedited, uh, ensuring a smoother and more coordinated uh, response. Uh, one of the one of the other key findings uh, revealed uh, that was around the need for clarify clarify the responsibility of various stakeholders involved in animal evacuation. While uh, there was recognition that uh, institutional capital, capability and policy frameworks existed, but highlighted that uh, the importance of integrating legislative and strategic information uh, to certain uh, institutional responsibilities. So to address this challenge, uh, some discussions stress the importance of establishing a world framework that outlined the roles and responsibilities of different agencies and organizations uh, during the evacuation. So that such clarity would not only promote efficient decision making, but 
decision making, but also facilitate effective collaboration between stakeholders. Uh, the other challenge was uh, pre disaster relationships and communication uh, cons concerns. So uh, it was identified uh, this lack of pre planned. Uh, like uh, connections and communication strategies or role for roles for stakeholders who would be required to assist in disaster situations. So th this highlighted the importance of uh, establishing a la large partnership and more uh, effective uh, partnership. So again, well it in advance to like a reduced dependence on uh, individual connections during uh, disasters. So the, the effective communication uh, was like a highlighted like a, so many times and was recognized as a significant challenge both the, both during and before disaster. Well, there was improvement in communication compared to the past. Uh, there was still the, the noted that there is room for enhancement. Uh, the, uh, participant uh, in the workshop, they emphasized the need for timely and comprehensive communication before disaster, before disaster. And, uh, this could uh, involve like establishing and and uh, designated communication channel so defining like a roles and responsibility for stakeholders and conducting like a regular drills exercise uh, to test the effectiveness of like a this communication system uh, so the other uh, challenge uh, that participant noted was while there is some information available about hazards and exposure in the region, there is critical need to update this data regularly. Uh, natural has hazards uh, such as flood and fires can be influenced by factors like a urbanization, land use changes, climate shifts, uh, making it uh, essential to keep the assessment uh, current. Uh, so I jump to the next slide. So social challenges and initiatives. So the uh, Participant acknowledged the lack of access to information faced by uh, farmers, by pet owners, horse owners, and uh, and they and actually they proposed a campaign to address these issues. So the, the so increasing capacity and uh, and preparedness require active invo involvement from local communities. Raising this awareness with these communities involve uh, educating the, them about the potential roles and supporting each other during emergency. So establishing communication network and channels to facilities that mutual aid and support uh, was recommended. Uh, so participants emphasize the need for additional help and education to empower communication uh, to, uh, to, in uh, to, in uh, to, to enhance communication and empower communities uh, in handling emergency effectively. Uh, so the, uh, the initiatives was like including social media, 
media, television, radio, newspaper, pamphlets, collaborating with local university for awareness and education research also was proposed. Uh, the, especially the, in this area, that was so many suggestions and the uh, initiative proposed. So the, I'm not sure how much time I have got, so I can pace my speed. You have about two minutes left, Heyman. Oh, okay. Yeah. The, uh, so the other, uh, so uh, communication emerged as a critical issue as well, uh, and not during the emergency, but also during like a planning stage. So the, the need for reliable communication challenge between like a response teams and the community was highlighted by uh, participant. Uh, the an important concern raised during the discussion was the formal recognition of animal safe facilities and the need for equal communication and support from authorities as provided uh, to communities. So that no, uh, the lack of formal recognition uh, pose challenges in, rece in receiving the like, necessary information. So the education and training also that was uh, uh, identified as a, like a key approaches to improve capacity. Uh, and the next uh, team is uh, infrastructure and financial challenges. So lack of information about the capacity of each facility uh, was pointed, limited capacity in the facility that, for example, no cats and sub facilities have extremely limited capacity. That was interesting. Some of them, if you can see from the uh, pictures below, uh, they, they have a, like a big yard, but they don't have fun to uh, turn it uh, to like a safe place for animals. So that the other thing that was need for road evacuation plan and traffic management. Uh, the, the other challenge that was, uh, it was discussed that facilities, resilience and surrounding area Crucial, uh, crucial to keeping animals and stuff safe. So facility upgrades here and surrounding to ensure like a safety of like both animals and uh, stuff was highlighted. So we have like a different part, uh, different part of facility, like a water supply system, loading and unloading areas for animal, lighting accommodation arrangement for anim for the animal owners the availability of cooking facilities and like a other uh stuff also uh was mentioned so the just go to the summary the through our discussion like uh key uh, challenges emerges, the need for clear communication, coordinated approaches, and proper training for volunteers and facilities owner. Uh, one of the like major highlights was that the importance of timely and accurate information uh, during emergency. Uh, so the, the the reliable platform uh such as like an app or provide real-time information about available evacuation center uh was really highlighted so uh just moving forward it's vital to address challenges identified and uh, implement like a practical solution. 
So we want to use technology to strengthen like a partnership and invest in education, training, and uh, by this, like making more resilient uh, community where both animals and human are cared uh, for. So during times of crisis, uh, we can build a safe and more prepared future for all. Yeah, thank, thank you. Thank you very much uh, for listening. And if you have any questions, I am here. Wonderful, Heyman. Thank you so much for your presentation. We do have two quick questions, hopefully. How did you determine the vulnerability of the ASPs? Did you measure them against, against some sort of risk matrix? And if so, is that something you would like to be rolled out in other regions? Uh, yes, so the, the, our team, our technical team had, uh, we, we have two, the, uh, one lecturer, and another post, uh, doc, another PhD candidate. So one of them uh, just focused on a fire. So different criteria there emerges like a wind sp speed, the site, uh, like a vegetation and like a, the, the location and like a different uh, other parameters. So we use that one for the assessment. The other part was for flooding. So also we went through like a, a different soil uh, structure, like a, uh, the proximity to uh, different, uh, like at the rivers, streams. So the level of the land there, and uh, other character there. So we use all those characters to assess uh, the vulnerability of each facilities. Wonderful. And Dr. Temi indicated she'd like to contribute to that answer. Dr. Temi, if you'd like to unmute yourself and jump in just for about 30 seconds. Sorry, I was trying to type. I didn't realize that that was what I was doing. Sorry, apologies for that. So uh, thank Emma for the uh, for the presentation. So what we basically did was that we did um, vulnerability assessment for the identified 25 centers that we did with uh, local land services within the Hunter region. So we identified 12 within nine LGAs. So that was what we did. So we did vulnerability assessment with them. We had We developed a framework for that that we use for assessing the vulnerability for, uh, so at the moment we've done bushfire and then we also done flooding. So we are moving to um, storm uh, for the next phase to look at those individ individual sites. So uh, we, so the, in, our final, um, in our final output, we'll be publishing a, sim a simpler version of this vulnerability assessment that could be used by other, um, other agencies. We've had people reach out to us from Queensland but the detailed vulnerability assessment will be kept with um, the limos where they can actually use them on a six monthly periodic um, time to evaluate those sites. So we did have an evaluation. We did, we did run a lot of modeling to determine that um, vulnerability of those assessments. We look at different parameters. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Cayman, for joining us this evening.